Plotly is a package inside of R that can make some amazing graphics, but to the new user, it can seem like a lot. We're gonna learn how to make amazing graphics like this in only 10 minutes. So stay with me as we start from the very beginning and work our way up to some great graphics. Let's go ahead and close this out right here. We're just gonna remove everything that we've created and start from the very beginning. So let's go all the way back up here. And the first thing we need to do is install Plotly. So make sure you've run the following code right here, install.packages with Plotly in quotes, because we're gonna go to the CRAN server and download that package from the CRAN server. You'll see it downloading on your computer as we speak right here. The next thing we're gonna do is run library Plotly. So first thing we do is we download the package and then we load up the package. So library function loads your library and we'll go ahead and run this. I've already loaded up the library, so I don't see anything appearing, but you're probably watching the library loading up as we speak. Now let's go ahead and create our first Plotly graphic. Right here, we're gonna create a horizontal box plot. So you'll notice that we have the left arrow going into fig, standing for figure. You can call it whatever you want. We're just calling it fig for figure for short. And now we're gonna call the Plotly function right here. This is the Plotly function, which cre will create the Plotly object. So the first thing we have right here is our first argument is the data. You'll notice it's separated by a comma from the second argument. We use commas inside of each function to separate the arguments. And the arguments are basically the instructions. It's saying to it, okay, first thing I want you to do is store X or save X right here for my Plotly object as iris petal width. So I'm using a data frame right here with a variable inside of it. And the way to go inside of your data frame is with the dollar sign. So this is my data. We can take a look at it right here. The data I have that I'm going to make my box plot with needs to be quantitative. Let's hit Control Enter on a PC or Command Enter on a Mac, and we can view the data. So the main important thing you should know right now is you need to put your data right here. X equals, and that's a tilde right there, which is on the far left side of your keyboard. Look for the tilde sign and then the name of your data. Once you've done that and you've put your data in that you want to display, you just need to do type equals box. Make sure to put a comma right here since this is a new argument and you're telling it what type of display do you want to make? A box plot, box for short. And we'll go ahead and run this. We now see that we've stored the figure to the global environment. And now we're going to view it by running this line of code. Here we are, we've created our first box plot. We've done it. One Plotly graphic has been created. Celebrate, you've done it. Now you can see all the amazing Plotly options. If we hover over it, we can see the five number summary. If you drag and pull, you can zoom in on certain parts of it. If you double click, you can zoom back as it's telling me right there, but we can do much better graphics. So let's improve upon this by taking our horizontal box plot and turning it vertical. So now we're just changing one argument right here. We're just changing the X right here to a Y. So now we're declaring our data as the Y variable, and this graphic behind me will now become a vertical box plot. But there's more we can do to it. Let's do a little bit extra, because that was a little bit too easy right there. Let's add to it a title. So we need to take and add to it something. Now I've added a comment down here to show you how this works. So let's read through this code, but in the comment version, we're taking our figure, and then piping it through. That's called a pipe. It like passes through and then is kind of augmented. It's kind of like flowing through a pipe and then kind of has like a change go to it. And what change are we making to it? We are adding a layout to it. So you can see it's gonna have this additional layout when it comes out the other side, and then we're storing it into figure. So this comment right here is the exact same thing as the line of code above it. So I'm just gonna delete off that comment because this line of code is doing that. But I think people get a little bit confused because the right side here will run and then it'll store into this. So you are passing your figure through this pipe and adding to it a layout. And then once that is done, it'll store and overwrite what was once in figure. So understanding how that works is very important that you're just adding this title to it. So let's go ahead and run these lines of code right here. Let's control enter on a PC or command enter on a Mac. And now let's take a look at our new figure. And what do we have? We have now added our box plot right here. So we've done a good bit right now. We've got a pretty good looking box plot. Maybe we don't like this name at the bottom. We don't like this trace zero. We can add an additional argument right here. Let's go and do name. And I don't want it to have any name, so I'm just gonna put a quote right there. So there's an additional argument. It's gonna change this name at the bottom of trace zero to nothing. 
Let's run this again and let's take a look. And we've now removed that trace zero, so it didn't call it anything. Maybe you have a name you want to call it, but I didn't want any name below it. And I've achieved that by adding in the extra argument of name and leaving nothing right there. So now let's say we want to make this look even fancier. We want to break it apart into groups based on another variable. So you'll notice right here, we are doing the same thing as we just did before. We have our Y variable inside of the plot leaf function right there. We have type equals box for box plots. And now we've added in the additional argument of color, and we are choosing the variable we want to do the color on. And now this works best for a data frame if you have your variable stored in a data frame, just so you can see what the IRS data set looks like. Let's go ahead and pull it up right here. I'm just gonna run the IRS data set down below. And you can see that we have different flowers. And here's the IRS data set. We are displaying the petal width right here, the petal width, and we are doing it by species right here. So make sure you have your data organized in a way like this, where the variables are connected, and then we can see different types of flowers and the associated petal widths in this vector right here. So we know what our data looks like, and we understand that it needs to be structured in this way for this graphic to work. So we should have two vectors in a data frame right now, one vector quantitative and one vector of categorical. And let's take a look right here. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add some X and Y titles. So very similar to what we did before, we've got the title right here, which we previously made, but then we're adding an additional argument inside of the layout function right here. This additional argument is Y axis and X axis. Now you might be wondering, why can't you just say Y axis equals and then just put title or whatever you want? It's because the Y axis and the X axis actually have multiple things that they can take. So we give it a list. So if you want, you could add in extra things right here. You could add in different fonts or different things you want when you make your Y axis and your X axis. But for right now, I just wanted to give them titles and call them width and call them flower type, but you can do additional options if you want. So right here, we just have the adding of the Y axis and the adding of the X axis inside of our layout that is gonna just control the layout for this. Let's go ahead and run this right here and see what we get. Here is our new graphic and it's really starting to look great right now. Now, this is where the Plotly options really come into play. This is one of the great things about Plotly. As you can go here and you can remove any of these by clicking on it. You can just click on these and go down to just a specific box plot. So we could look at two, we can look at one, and you can just do all the different graphics. You could zoom in on it. You could say, let me zoom in this way right here. And you can zoom in, you could go to a blank space. It's no good, don't do that. You can go back out right here, but there's so many options and you've got all these extra options up top and you can see the five number summary. And that looks that looks really excellent. That's really cool. You can put this on a web page right here. Um, you can see what's going on. Very easy, very nice graphic, really excellent stuff right here with Plotly. But still, there's more. There's always more options with Plotly. Let's do something really advanced right here. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna add some more color schemes to this and control how the points are made in Plotly. So this last one right here is gonna control the color scheme a little bit and control how the points look in Plotly. So what do we have? We have our plotly object we're creating again. We know that by now. We have our Y variable that we're declaring. We have the type we are making. We could change it to something else, but we still want box plots now. We've got color right here. Once again, we are going to use a different color scheme and separate them based on colors. And then we have box points. This is another argument right here, box points. I put a hashtag right here for the different things we could do. I'm gonna use suspected outliers. This is going to use an open circle for things that are mild outliers and a closed circle for things that are more extreme outliers. It's just one way to do box plots. You've got the outliers option, the all option, and the false option, which is a logical, that one will not go inside of quotes. And I encourage you to take a look at these and just see which one you like best. You just would go here, we could go to outliers, and we could change this, and now we'd be doing a different version right here. So take a look at those. We've got the marker right here. The marker will be the point coloring right here. Let's show what that'll be. That'll be the point coloring right here. And then we've got line, which will be the lines going around the outside of it. This is not the new graphic yet, but this is what we're controlling. The marker will change the dots and then the line will change the line around the outside. And I've picked some colors that I like. You can use an RGB color selector. So here's what I went to, it was on Google. And you can scroll down a little bit in this image and you can see the RGB colors right here that it suggested to me. So I went and just scrolled through RGB color picker and you can go and select the color you like. Just use something like this, nice and easy. 
And that pretty much does it for the new things we've added. We have a new argument right here for the marker and for the line, and it goes through a list also because there's additional options. I just wanted to do the color for it at the moment. So let's go ahead and run this, and we haven't changed anything to the layout. Let's go ahead and run the layout, and let's take a look at our new graphic. So if you look, there's the colors I picked. I picked a purple right here and a darker blue. So really a lot of cool options you can do. Just in under 10 minutes here, we've talked about how to make some box plots going from a very simple box plot up to a side-by-side -side box plot graphic with different color schemes, with different layout options, but there's still more. So I encourage you to keep looking at Plotly and trying out new things.